Hi, guys. I yelled in the microphone to start, so I'm trying to be a little better this round. Um, <laughs> for both of you, what's the experience been like? I know it's been a very quick turnaround, but both of you have such significant ties to this event. What it's been like to kind of walk around the field? What are your initial feelings? Uh, I mean, I love it. You know, I, I took a walk. I don't think I've walked around any field since I've been up in the big leagues. And, uh, you know, I just went out just to kind of enjoy it and take it all in. And, you know, I looked around on the field at first, and then I figured out that there was a full another field behind the fence trying to get to the old one. So, you know, went to check that out and just super special to be here. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool to see and just walk around and see uh, what they've done with the place. Good. The first row on your left, guys, with John. Mason, you touched on it, and Brendan, I mean, you guys will be standing where Jackie Robinson stood, where Hank Aaron played, where Willie Mays played. Does that, the, the magnitude of that history hit you when you get out there, maybe? Yeah, I, I just can't imagine the, the amount of courage that these guys had. And history is something that we should celebrate. And for us to be a part of this and, and for us to just to go out there and enjoy it and play a game here, I think it's very special for, for Major League Baseball. I think it's very special for this, this state as well. Mason? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just like you said, being on the same field as so many historic people and so many legends, um, pretty special. I mean, I grew up learning about all these guys and uh, just to be able to, you know, say I played on the same field as them is, I mean, I'm going to be able to tell my grandkids that. Um, I mean, it's just super, super important. And, and you know, for, for me, this team, I think it's super special and we're, we're just honored to be a part of it. Go to the second row on your left, guys. Charles Harmon, Minnesota spokes recorder for Mason. Uh, there's still the fact that there's not a lot of blacks in, in the Major League Baseball, and we play on a field that players could play in the league because of their skin color. Have you reflected upon that and why there's still that low number of blacks in, the, in baseball? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously this field is, you know, is home to some of the greats um, in the Negro Leagues, and uh, for me, like you said, there's not a lot of, not a lot of brothers in baseball, so uh, I think it's important, you know, me and Jordan Walker talked about it a lot, just being an inspiration, you know, not only to the kids around St. Louis, but just, you know, all over the world trying to trying to get some more color in baseball. I think, um, you know, I think it'd be good for the game. You know, I feel like a lot of a lot of kids grow up want to be football or, or basketball players. And, you know, they don't know how fun baseball can be and, and how truly impactful that we can we can be on the field. Good. Jeff on your right, Gus. Mason, I know you mentioned over the weekend that your stepdad took measures when you were little to make sure that you guys learned about a lot about the Negro Leagues. Can you just speak to what it's going to mean to your family for you to be out here and, and maybe even some of those teammates we had when you were little who had to learn who Cool Papa Bell was, who had to learn who Satchel Page was and write about it. Now they get to watch you play it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be super special for him, obviously. You know, my stepdad is, uh, you know, he's been to the Negro League Museum about 100 times in Kansas City. He got to go to the one here last night. So... You know, I saw him this morning. I mean, he was almost brought to tears just being here and, you know, being a part of this. I think, uh, you know, all the way around, I mean, it's kind of full circle. You know, grew up playing on a team called the Negro League Legends and, you know, learning about these guys and now getting to play on the same field that some of them played on is super special. I'm sure he'll probably shed a couple of tears. I mean, even I might, honestly, it's going to be pretty emotional tonight for me. Um, and, yeah, and for the teammates I played with growing up on those teams, I mean, they're going to, you know, they're going to get to see me out there tonight and it's super special to, to be a part of it. Um, like I said, it really just feels full circle to, to come back to it. About four rows back on your left, guys. Right over here. Uh, Mason, you used the word full circle and respect to the patch that you're wearing with Willie Mays' passing, the fact that you're playing here at Rickwood and against the San Francisco Giants, um, how much more special is tonight going to be knowing that you're honoring uh, one of the greatest players to ever play the game? Oh, it's going to be it's going to be insane. You know, I'm, I'm sure I'll be overwhelmed with emotions. Um, you know, he was he was another player that we threw on our back whenever I was younger. So uh, getting to honor him and, you know, being being one of the only black players out here today is going to be pretty special. And, you know, getting to, getting to represent the black community and, you know, specifically him wearing this patch. You know, hopefully we get to wear it every day. I don't I don't know what their plans are with that, but um, super incredible. You know, I, I think everybody wishes he could be here. And, um, you know, I'm glad that, you know, that where we are playing the Giants, you know, makes it even more special for him. And standing on the camera riser on your right. Hi, guys. I know there's a lot going on, extracurriculars and, you know, the emotions going into the game, being able to step onto the field. But how do you kind of just refocus and regroup once you guys get into the dugout? Because you guys are in the grind of the season and need to get some more wins. 
Yeah, so obviously quick turnaround. We're coming from Miami. Um, obviously, there's a lot of media attention around this. But at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're playing for something greater than you. And you, know, you do understand this is your job. You make time for, for things like this. It's extremely important. But, you know, we're, we just finished our routines and uh, you try to map everything out. Just manage your time wisely. And we do understand, you know, this ball club is, is show up, prepare, play hard and, and win on a daily basis. And so that's what we plan to do. <clears throat> Second row on your left, guys. Andrew. Hey, Mason, a lot of people view this event as a stepping stone to get more black kids involved in the game. What do you think, what do you think can be done to make sure that more black kids get involved in the game beyond this event? What do you think can be done after this? Um, you know, I honestly just think it's, you know, players like myself, players like, you know, Nick Gordon, you know, Dane Myers, just guys having fun out there. And uh, like I said, a lot of black kids grow up wanting to be football players, basketball players, because that's kind of you know, kind of the mold that we've been put into. But I think just, you know, it's our job to go out there and, and show these kids that it's fun to be out there and, and play baseball and compete at the highest level. Um, you know, I think a, a, a big part of it is, you know, financials. It's pretty hard to, you know, go through the baseball circuit and make it up here. But, I mean, you know, that's something I'm looking into later on, you know, for sure. And But just like I said, just having fun, you know, putting a smile on every day and just having a good time I think is going to show a lot of these kids that, you know, they can do it as well. Other questions? I will go to John on your left, guys. Mason, could you tell us your story, how you got interested in baseball, um, you know, your dreams and goals early on, and what led you to baseball over another sport? Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I started playing baseball probably when I was four, four or five years old. And, you know, being from Texas, I had to pretty much had to play football as well. So threw myself in there in basketball. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, as I got older, um, you know, I met my stepdad when I was eight years old, and, you know, he really taught me how to play the game, how to play it hard, how to play it the right way, um, and how to, how to have fun while playing as well. But, um, and then as far as what made me gravitate towards baseball, I would say, you know, I stopped growing at one point, so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't play basketball a little too short, you know, a little too small to play football. But baseball, I mean, I always loved it. You know, I was pretty decent at it at a young age. So, you know, my mom always pushed me to, to stay with it. and. You know, it's just, it's hard not to love the game. Other questions for Brendan or Mason? Am I missing anybody? All right, guys, enjoy today. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.